the spherical wavetable navigator are super versatile and I'm going to show you some of the things you can do with them in this video. So first I have already prepared some nodes. I tuned each channel here and picked some waveforms. And the first thing you're going to want to know about LFOs is this button, LFO to VCA. Push it. What happens is each channel's LFO gets assigned to modulate the volume or the amplitude of each channel, which makes notes. So it uses the LFOs kind of as, as envelopes. The next thing you're going to want to know about is this shape knob. If you turn it, uh, you can change the shape of the envelope. So turning to the right, you get more percussive sounds like this. And if you keep going, they start to get reverse. And then after that, there's some sine waves and triangle waves, and then a whole bunch of complicated shapes and just experiment and explore. Um, there's also a chart in the manual. What else can you do? Well. You can change the speed, of course, and here I'm going to go turn this one double, double time, back to normal. I go double, triple, quadruple, but it goes all the way into the audio rate if you keep going, um, and that's a different video right there because you can actually use these as uh, audio oscillators, but let's handy shortcut, preset for speed, resets it. If you go the other way and slow it down, half speed, quarter, or third, quarter, etc., etc. I'm going to do that a little later when I show you external clock sync. Um, so this is a global clock divider. It slows everything down or speeds everything up. Also, if you hold the fine knob, you can just do it by small amounts. So you could or slow down by small amounts. You don't have to go by full, like, times two, times three uh, integer increments. So uh, what else can you do? You can use these jacks. Each of these jacks is outputting, whether or not you have LFO to VCA on, it's outputting an LFO. So go ahead and patch one somewhere. Every time this channel C fires, it spins the browse parameter, you can see. Now, you can change how much how much the uh, modulation happens with the gain control. So what I just did is if you hold down the channel that you want to change and push and turn the speed knob, which is gain, I turn it down, I get a subtle effect. Turn it up a little. Turn it up a little more. Turn it back down. There, that's that's kind of nice. I also can change just the shape the shape of just this channel too. Say I want to make this one one of the less percussive ones. Actually, what I want to do is make it one of the sine or triangle ones. Let me find the orange one. So you also can use the LFOs to go to external gear. Uh, for instance, here I have a sound off camera and I could use one of these LFOs to modulate the pitch. And I can do everything I can do when I'm internally routing. Speed. I can change the shape. And gain. Um, you could, of course, use this to synchronize. Uh, like run a, a clock out, have this be a, your clock output to synchronize some other gear. But more common, I think what people will do, um, what I end up doing is synchronizing the swan downstream from something else. So let me show you that. This is a master clock I have running from my DLD here. And um, I'm going to plug it into the clock input here. And as it reads that tempo, now my swan is synced to my DLD. Let me turn up the delay so you can hear that. So here we have clock sync delay.
what if you wanted this clock to fall not when channel A fires, but to fall when channel D fires, let's say. So let's turn our delay down and hear that. So you do that, you can change where the clock lands within um, the phase of all the LFOs with the phase, the phase feature. If I want to globally change all of them, I just push and turn this shape knob until it lines up. Rhythms there. There. So now the clock is, is synced with channel D. And if you need to micro adjust it, let's say it's not, uh, you know, it's not exactly on, you can hold the find button down and turn phase to push it forward or backwards a little bit. Okay, so that that's global LFO phase. Uh, you also can apply phase just to a channel individually, and that's really useful. And I'm going to show you another feature you can do. If you push both these buttons at the same time, I'm going to reset my LFOs here. See, every LFO, it resets the phase of every LFO. Now they're all firing together. Now if I push these again, See how they're now they're 60 degrees out of phase. They fire one after another. Let's make a more percussive one so you can hear it better. So push them together, and they all fire together. So why is this useful? Well, if you start with a zero phase, everything firing together, you can make some interesting patterns. So let me let me show you what I mean. Um, right now they're all at times one, so they're all going with the clock. But you can change the speed individually. So here, let's make this one double. Make this one triple. That one triple. And this one four. And this one uh, double. OK. So we just got a more complicated pattern. It's not just a sequence. And uh, you can also adjust the phase of them. So here how these two channels going together. Let's say I want them to go not together, but going at the same speed, I could push and turn phase. Right? Now they're alternating. Turn this one back a little. I'm going to make a change the shape of this one, make it slower. So there, you can make some uh, some complicated patterns there that aren't exactly sequences in the term in the strict sense of a, a grid sequencer, but you can play with how fast each channel is going and where in the measure it lands uh, by using the the phase and the speed uh, individually. So let's reset this and that and that. So now I have uh, my kind of strict sequence going again. And let me show you another thing you can do with the uh, global clock divider. So so here my clock is coming in from the DLD, and it's times um, it's times one. It's it's equal every time it fires the LFO. The whole thing plays once through. Now, what if I wanted it to fire, play, basically play a note every time I got a clock? Well, I could slow this down. I'm going to, just so you can hear, I'm going to turn the kind of a metronome sound on. And if I turn this one, I get half speed. So clock divider, global clock divider, divide by two. If I turn it again, it's divided by three. If I keep 
going. Now I've got it. I've got it where each time a clock comes in, a new note plays because I have a divide by six. I turn this down to divide by six. Right? So my clock divider is still synced. I mean, I'm sorry, my delay, clock delay is still synced. It's just that um, this is running one sixth of the speed. So now a little more advanced thing is how do you define where the downbeat is, where the one is? Um, if, if you don't understand this level, don't worry about it. But what, if you push the phase button, it will the next clock that happens will become the one. That'll become your your zero phase point. So which is channel A right now. So if I were to say I know I want it to be one, then I push this right before the one. So here, um, this is the one now. Two. Three. No, I want one here. One. Two, see? Every time you push it, it'll go back to channel A. It stays in sync with the clock, but it the next clock that fires will become your, your downbeat. 